one of the things that always gets discussed around Oscar time are the people who got nominated and the people who did not. The Washington Post has their write-up in terms of the biggest 2024 Oscar nomination snubs and surprises. Some of the things that were surprising, well, let me just go through some of, of their notes. One of the things that was surprising is that Sterling K. Brown got nominated for the movie American Fiction. American Fiction is a very interesting film. I really want to see it about a, it's kind of like the movie Bamboozled, which came out years ago. It's about a black author who's trying to write work about the black experience that's more intellectual, and he gets disgruntled because works that are depicting kind of a baser, grittier version of black life are getting elevated by whites, and so he kind of tries to play within that. Sterling K. Brown got an Oscar nod for Best Supporting Actor for that, and that surprised a number of people. Leonardo DiCaprio did not get nominated for his acting in Killers of the Flower Moon, which is a very interesting story about the very first case that the FBI ever investigated. It's about the beginning of the FBI in a way, this case that has to do with Native American tribes that live on wealthy land that has oil underneath. And then a number of murders are committed by white robber barons, basically, who want to, to take the land to get the oil. That's what Killers of the Flower Moon is about. It's about the beginning of the FBI. And in the best actor race, many people believe it's Killian Murphy, who played J. Robert Oppenheimer in the movie Oppenheimer, brilliantly. And Paul Giamatti, who is the lead actor in The Holdovers, it's a movie about a kind of cantankerous university professor who is left on campus over the holidays with the students who don't go home. And it's it's a kind of a heartwarming comedy. Bradley Cooper for Maestro for playing the brilliant conductor and composer Leonard Bernstein. Coleman Domingo for playing Bayard Rustin in Rustin. Bayard Rustin is the man who taught nonviolence to Martin Luther King. And he's the organizer of the March on Washington. Bayard Rustin was a Quaker. He was a pacifist. He was an openly gay man. Yes, people in the movement knew he was gay. And that's why they had to kind of keep him in the back because the FBI would have basically run roughshod over the entire movement and said that they are, you know, associating with homosexuals in a pre-Stonewall America in which there was no public gay rights movement. Bayard Rustin was a very remarkable person. One of the things that Bayard Rustin said that always stuck with me was, we are all one. And if we do not know it, we will learn it the hard way. Very true. Very true. And then Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Leonardo DiCaprio did not get nominated for Killers of the Flower Moon. So that was kind of a surprise. But one of the other big surprises is that Greta Gerwig, who directed the Barbie movie, did not get nominated for Best Director, even though it was the highest grossing movie of the entire year. Also, Ryan Gosling got nominated for playing Ken, but Margot Robbie did not get nominated for playing Barbie, for playing the lead in the movie. However... America Ferrara, who played one of the real-world characters, America Ferrara, who we love, got nominated for Best Supporting Actress, which she totally deserves. Here's the thing, though, and this is, this is why I bring this up. One of the things that we talked about on the podcast, so if you've heard the podcast, you've already heard me say this, is that Margot Robbie's role in Barbie is bigger than playing the main character. And I think once I learned about this, I was much more, much more impressed with her. She's kind of remarkable in terms of the way that she made this thing happen and in the way that she got this movie done. Margot Robbie actually is not just the star of the Barbie movie. She did a profile in Vogue magazine in May talking about the Barbie movie. And in that profile, she talks about going to Mattel back in 2018, Mattel, the company that owns and makes Barbie and talking to them about making a Barbie movie and bringing Greta Gerwig on. And so Margot Robbie is one of the producers of Barbie, and she got Greta Gerwig attached to the project to write it and direct it, and she starred in the movie. And why does that matter? Because the reports about Margot Robbie being snubbed are actually wrong. Actually, she did get nominated for something much more remarkable and I think much more important. She did not get nominated for Best Actress, but she did get nominated for, let me close this side window, she did get nominated for something much bigger. Margot Robbie is nominated for Best Picture because in the Academy Rules, if you are nominated for Best Picture, the people who receive the award are the producers of the movie. And there she is, 
David Heyman, Margot Robbie, Tom Ackerley, and Robbie Brenner. So Margot Robbie might not win Best Actress, but she, as an enterprising woman who made the film happen, could win Best Picture. I think that's much more significant. That this beautiful, goofy, silly, fun movie about so many things has been finally acknowledged, and the Academy doesn't seem to like to acknowledge pop culture comedies. But this time, amazingly, they did. That this wonderful film could get nominated, I think is fantastic. And the Barbie movie really, like, punched me in the gut when I saw it. It's so funny, and then it gets so poignant, and it's so, like, back and forth, that by the end of the movie, I was like, I have to do an episode of the podcast on this. <laughs> and so this is back when I, you know, did just pre-produced audio-only podcasts and sort of, like, ground away for hours and hours making this audio masterpiece instead of the kind of fly by the seat of the pants program that we're doing today, which you love so very much. And I, it just moved me. It was just very, very moving. I would encourage you, if you haven't heard it, go to the podcast. The episode is still there. It, all, it begins with a conversation about the politics of masculinity, which I think is sort of the flip side of the whole issue with the Barbie movie, in conversation with a writer from Politico who did a piece about the politics of masculinity in 2023 and how some particularly candidates and, and uh, politicos on the political right are talking about masculinity in ways that may invigorate voters, particularly young male voters who are looking for a smarter conversation about masculinity today. And then we break down the Barbie movie and my thoughts on the, on the film. I won't spoil it for you because I'd like you to hear it, but I think a lot of people came out of the Barbie movie and also incorrectly said that it's a movie about the patriarchy. That's not quite correct. Patriarchy is definitely a factor in the film, which you know if you've seen it, but it's not about that. It's about something way worse than that, my perspective, and I explain that in the podcast. But I say congratulations. I would love to see... I would. Could you imagine if Best Picture of the Year, if they had to grit their teeth and say that it's the Barbie movie? I think that would be absolutely wonderful for the Academy, though, you know, Oppenheimer was also a phenomenal film. Um, I know some people don't really like to talk about the Oscars because people, and, and if you feel this way, that's fine, kind of question whether or not the Oscars matter anymore. I think they do. I think it's I think it's really easy to say the Oscars don't matter when you've never won one. And I think a lot of the people who, I suspect a lot of the people who are just like, oh, the Oscars, whatever, may be feeling that way because they want their own kind of acknowledgement. And I think it's easy when you feel, and I'm not knocking this, I can relate to this. I think it's easy when you seek acknowledgement for whatever arena you're in, whether it's movies or something else, and how many of us really work in the movies. Hundreds of thousands of people, but not everyone. I think it's easy to say that the Oscars don't matter when what you're really trying to say is acknowledgement doesn't matter. Achievement doesn't matter. And if you're frustrated because of your lack of achievements or your lack of acknowledgement, rightly or wrongly, it's easy to try to kind of delegitimize the whole thing as a way of easing your own pain. I don't judge that. I empathize with that. I know what that feels like. And I think it's hard sometimes to just let people have their day when you have never had yours. I don't think that's a reason for judgment. I think that's a reason for empathy and for acknowledgement and validation so that people can have their fun and that we can all kind of strive for big things, whether or not we win the trophy. I'm not a fan of participation trophies, and I'm not going to spend my life trying to catch someone else's brass ring, but I get it. You know, I get it. It's hard to kind of put one foot in front of the other and not get acknowledgement for it. So I don't know. We will see. We will see how the Oscars go when they air in, I believe, about a month and a half on ABC. 